Hello, my name is Derek from Tomcat Gas Training and the videos you're about to watch were designed specifically for trainee plumbers and gas engineers. Plumbers to standard level 2, level 3 City and Guild and gas trainees on the Managed Learning Programme, the MLP. The information in these uh, videos is specific for their training but if you're not a trainee gas engineer or plumber why not stick around and you might learn something about the plumbing history. Hope you enjoy it. See you soon. Hello, my name's Derek from Tomcat Gas Training and today I'm going to be talking about the evolution of the central heating system and how it's evolved over the years. So, go back to the Roman days, you could say we had central heating. Kind of different to the central heating we have today. What the Romans did was they had stone floors, ducted stone shafts, they set a fire at the end of the house using slaves, and the heat from the fire then went through the house, heating the house through the walls and out through the chimney. So you could say the Romans uh, brought central heating into this country. Did you know the word plumber? derives from the Latin word plumbum, but we actually use the French abbreviation of this, which is plumber, which means leadsmith. Mm, technically, but and we forgot all about it for 800 years, and it even bothered. Now, the modern central heating system didn't really come in until just after the Second World War, but in the 1800s, early 1900s, we were using heating to warm water. And that's basically what central heating started off to be. Okay, It started off as a way of warming hot water, warming water to turn it into, into hot water. And the way we did that was by using solid fuel back boilers. The flushing toilet was invented by John Harrington in 1596. That's where the Yanks get the term from going to the job. In the UK, Thomas Crapper made the loo popular. That's why we always say we're going for a, a, a poo. So look at this simple drawing. Basically what we've got here is a boiler. This would be a, could be a copper back boiler installed in the back of a solid fuel coal burning, coke burning fire. What the fire would do is warm the copper. The copper then would transfer that heat through into the water and then with the use of um, current it would then gravity the water up into the cylinder. Now this is what we call a direct cylinder. Okay, difference between a direct cylinder and an indirect cylinder is a direct cylinder has no coil. If you have a dripping tap and it drips twice in a minute, you will waste about four and a half litres of water a week. Okay, so the water within that cylinder comes in direct contact with the back boiler. Okay, so that water in there is the same water in there, not like it is today, but we'll look at that later. So this was a direct cylinder, we'll look at indirect cylinders later. So we had a feed system. Okay, the feed system was above the cylinder. We then used gravity again to force the water in through the cylinder, and then it went out through the taps. So the displacement of the water going through the taps was replaced by the feed system. So what happened in the cylinder was we had what called stratification. Stratification is the different layer temperatures of the water within the system. So at the bottom of the cylinder is the coldest part. At the top of the cylinder is the hottest part. So the water coming out of there nowadays will run between 55 and 60 degrees. Okay, we need to keep that water over 50 degrees because we need to keep Legionella disease away. Uh, Legionella is uh, dormant um, below 20 degrees and is killed above 50 degrees. So that's why we need to make sure this water is, uh, is kept at high temperature. Uh, 
energy. But in these days, they didn't care about that. They had a solid fuel back boiler. No, uh, they, they threw the coal on the fire. It warmed up. There's no stats. There's no way of controlling the heat to heat that water up. So technically, you could have um, the water boiling in there. But because this gave off so little heat, and people couldn't afford to, you know, to keep the fires going 24/7. They tried to, but uh, uh, the, the water they were using as well, it was being replaced with cold all the time. So it really didn't get into that boiling point. At night time, they always made the fires go down, so it was never boiling the water at night time. So that's the old systems. Now, the feed system, that would have been a galvanized system in the loft. You might know it as a tank. Okay, everybody calls them tanks, but they're not, they're cisterns. Difference between a cistern and a tank is, we went to war in a tank. In 1939, Al Moen invented the quarter turn tap. And the average person spends about three and a half years of their life sitting on the loo. In a tank, okay. Uh, the word tank means sealed vessel of water. Okay, where a cistern is a vented vessel of water. Uh, during the war, uh, First World War, they used the term tank to uh, disguise the motorised gun. So the Germans didn't know what it was. They just thought it was a motorised vessel of water to get it to the front. Not that it was going to come over and shoot them and blow them up. But there's a little bit of history for you on why um, tanks for the war were called tanks. So a tank is a sealed vessel of water, a cistern is a vented vessel of water. Anyway, forget about the history, back to the plumbing, or the plumbing history, there we go. So, cold water coming in to the cylinder. This was done, like I said, under gravity. So, in this pipe would be 22 mil. Okay, no 15 mil needed here, we need 22 mil. A lot of them in the old days were fed in 28. There are about 2.6 billion people who do not have access to a proper toilet. The other 5 billion just leave the lid up or pee on the seat. We also need an isolation valve or a gate valve. This gate valve has to be or should be installed above the cylinder. The reason why we install it above the cylinder is because if we wanted to change that valve, we could drain the water from the cistern through the taps. But how do we get rid of the water out the cylinder? Well, we'd have to drain it there and it would be a waste of water. Also, it's easier to get at the, the valve if the valve was uh, above the, the cylinder. So that's the reason why we always put them above so we're not wasting water. but we do need a drain valve in there. Okay, so feed system. It has a lid. We've got a vent pipe coming over the top. Now the reason for the vent pipe on the hot water is to stop the cylinder imploding. If we didn't have that vent pipe allowing the atmospheric pressure to equalize, when you open the tap, it would suck the cylinder flat. So that's the reason for the vent pipe. And the vent pipe terminates over the top there because it's also a warning pipe. So if that water did boil and it did go above atmospheric pressure, it would then send the water back into the, the cylinder. And we could get, if we installed this vent pipe in the wrong place, we could have what's called single pipe circulation or parasitic circulation. And that is if I drew the vent pipe straight off the top there. So let's draw it in. So if I came straight off the top there, brought it over into the, into the cistern, what would happen is we would get the water coming off, heating in there, the warm water then would rise over the vent pipe, drop into the cistern, warm the water in the cistern and make it circulate around. The same way as it would circulate around this cistern. So we do not install it straight off the top of the cylinder. Uh, the, the cylinder. 
King George II died falling off the loo on the 25th of October 1760, but the most famous person to die on the loo was Elvis Presley, who died on the 16th of August 1977. We need a distance of 450 mil from there to there to stop uh, single pipe circulation or parasitic circulation. So a lot of these systems don't get installed now because we've got unvented cylinders. Unvented cylinders are far more efficient um, than vented cylinders. So this technology is kind of dying out. Like me, it's a dinosaur. You must hold the relevant qualifications to be able to install an unvented cylinder but you must always follow the manufacturer's instructions or building regulations document. So, um, but if you do go to an old system, one of the things you will be looking for is to make sure that the vent pipe is more than 450 mil away from the outlet off the top of the, uh, the cylinder. The most famous plumber ever is Super Mario. But did you know that Bob Hoskins, who played Mario in the film, was a plumbing apprentice? Did you also know that Ozzy Osbourne was apprenticed and so was Michael Caine? Not a lot of people know that. Okay, so that's pretty much the cylinder. Let's look at these. So this is the flow return coming up into the direct cylinder. And this is what we call the primary circs primary circulation pipe. So this is primary coming off the boiler to feed the cylinder. Anything coming off that, so if we had central heating coming off that, that would be the secondary circulation. Now the hot water part, this pipe here is called the distribution pipe. Okay, so this would be the hot water distribution pipe and this is your, your, your stored cold water. Okay, so your primary circs in this situation, these would be 28 millimeters. The reason why they were 28 millimetres and not 15 or 22 is the bigger the pipe, the bigger the convection currents can flow around. So convection can work around, so convection is basically um, the cold water coming in at the bottom, displacing the hot so it allows it to circulate around. If we've got 28 mil pipe there, it will flow around easy, no need for a pump. There's no pumps on this system, okay? Not been invented yet, so... Um, came after the war or during the war. So uh, this is your cold water flowing in, being replaced by the hot water. So this water, there's no stats on there. There's nothing to stop it boiling. So there's nothing to turn the boiler off because again, it's still a solid fuel boiler. Ever wondered why the manhole covers in the road are round? Well, if they were rectangled or square, they could actually fall in their own openings. Okay, there's no way of turning that off. So this is where the introduction of gas boilers came in, where and oil boilers basically, where they've got stats and we've got a way of um, turning the water off at the right temperature using controls. But the first thing we need to do to do that will be to isolate the hot water from the boiler. And I'll show you how we're going to do that now. Thanks for watching. Part 2 continues straight after this, so don't go away.